The uh, humidity probe that will keep track of the humidity percentage and control the reptile fogger. We have a 0.2 micron filter. These are going to be attached to holes that we're going to create as well in this chamber to keep any uh, bacteria or spores from entering the chamber and keeping your mushrooms nice and safe. Velcro strips, which we'll use to attach to a LED light and will be controlled by a uh, smart plug which you can use to control from any device to keep the light on a certain uh, pattern. Also we have here a temperature monitor that will be placed inside the chamber. As well we have a reptile fogger. This will be keeping the humidity levels up inside the chamber, preferably above 90 percent. And that can be accompanied by perlite which could be used as an option for a uh, less uh, expensive version because the reptile fire can run in a higher price range. However, it's going to require more maintenance with spraying uh, and uh, uh, on your part as the grower to keep track of how your mushrooms are doing. But all in all, it's pretty easy to build and put together. Um, it's, the parts are pretty inexpensive and it should be a lot of fun putting it together. And you can find everything on the Green Food Solutions website. Now that you know all of the parts that you need to assemble your grow chamber, here are the tools. So the first tool you're going to need is some sort of drill. And we have a drill with a 2 and 1 8 uh, hole saw uh, bit. Um, or you can go larger than that. And you'll see we want something to fit our uh, micron filter. We also have Gorilla Glue or this epoxy and you're going to mix these two in a disposable container with a, a disposable uh, stirrer. A, we also have sandpaper and a grind point. So you can do one or the other and this is to uh, take away the shavings of the plastic when we drill into our grow chamber. Also going to need some Gorilla Tape. We're also going to have a 3 fourths hex shank spade bit in order to drill a hole for our reptile fogger. We also have a ruler, and this is to measure hole, uh, the distance between holes that we're going to drill and markers in order to mark the different points where we're, we're drilling holes. And all of these tools will be found on greenfoodsolutions.com. Step one, we're going to drill our ventilation holes in the grow chamber. You don't have to worry about being so perfect. Uh, these ventilation hole markings I made are just to keep me organized. Step two, we're going to be smoothing the holes that we just made with either the grinding point or the sandpaper, but for this video we're going to use the grinding point because it's much quicker. We're going to grind the rough edges just to make them safe to work with. Next up, we're going to use our hex shank spade bit, 3 fourths inch, to make a hole for the fogger tubing. 
Uh, we chose a place on our chamber, but you can customize it to however your setup is going to look like. Uh, and I placed a dot already, so I'm just going to drill right into it. And again, I'm just going to sand down the edges again. Once we placed the fogger tubing in the hole that we just made, we can now use either Gorilla Tape or Epoxy to seal the fogger in. to make an air tight seal around the water. Right. There you go. And now our fogger is attached with the tape and we're now gonna apply the 0.2 micron filters to each air vent hole we just made. All right, cool. First, I'm going to mix the epoxy with the resin and hardener. You just want to give small amounts each time uh, because you don't want to pour all the tubing out at once and waste everything because this does dry pretty quick and you want to mix equal parts. There's different epoxies that uh, dry uh, clear. This one happens to dry black, which is okay. It doesn't really matter. And make sure you are in a well-ventilated space because this stuff really does smell toxic. <laughs> I like to fly a little bit along the edge where I'm going to place the epoxy. Make sure you put a generous amount so it creates a nice adequate airtight seal around the 0.2 micron filter. Make sure you kind of line it up right. It's okay if it's not perfectly on and make sure you hold and press each part that is going to be affixed to the wall of the grow chamber. All right, and there you go. You want to let this dry completely for 24 hours before you place any mushrooms inside the chamber. Step five is gonna be placing the Velcro strips to the LED light uh, that is gonna be affixed to the top of the grow chamber. We'll be sticking it towards the top of the grow chamber. I've already chosen the place for it. If you want to use your marker with your ruler to mark an even spot on the roof of the container, you can do that as well. But just make sure it can still somewhat latch on to the container and leaving room for it to close. 
Step six, we're going to place the humidity monitor uh, wire into the chamber, uh, taping it to the wall, and we're going to placing a piece of Velcro towards the back of the monitor so that we can see the information that's being displayed towards us in, in plain sight. The reason why I tape it is so that it doesn't rest too close to the wall so it can get proper humidity read. Step seven, we're going to attach the temperature probe onto the inside of the choke chamber as well as have the monitor on the outside just like we did for the humidity monitor. Sometimes I just like to make the end of the suction cup to get it on nice. You can use water if you want to be less gross. And here you can see the information is already being displayed. Step eight, we want to now fill our reptile fogger with boiled or distilled water. Uh, the reason being is because we don't want to introduce any types of pathogen into the growth chamber that would affect our fruiting phase of the mushrooms and affect our yield eventually. This has already been cooled. Uh, please obviously don't use boiling hot water. As you can see, I'm attaching the fogger to the tubing, which is attached to the grow chamber which has been taped on and held in place. Then we're going to take our reptile fogger and plug it into work one on the humidity controller. The humidity controller is then going to be plugged in at all times to a constant power source while our light switch will be connected to the smart plug, which will be controlled with a light cycle that we will set up on our smartphone. And this is in order to ensure that the mushrooms are encouraged to start pinning, which is the beginning of fruiting. Um, this success is done because in the wild, Mushrooms usually are interacting with light when they've grown towards the surface of the soil and this will introduce them also to oxygen, which is also what we're providing with the fogger and the vent holes, which will encourage pinning to occur as well. Uh, these variables, if, if, if do not exist, if there was inadequate, inadequate venting or no fogger in place and you're just using the perlite at the bottom, hydrated again also with boiled or distilled water, you could run into the issue of uh, high CO2 levels, which would inhibit pinning as well. For this next step, we're going to plug in the humidity probe and program it uh, because we want to keep our mushroom chamber at at least 90% humidity or higher. Um, we want to make sure that when we program the humidity monitor that it turns on the fogger if it drops below 90%. Mushrooms like to grow in a very humid, moist environment because mushrooms are made up of 90% water, actually. So we're going to hold our finger over the set button until we have HS, which is flashing, which basically means the high humidity setting that we want to place. So we want our chamber to go up to at least 90%. So we have to hang on there. I like to go to about 91%. Let me press set again. And this is the humidity difference monitor. So I like to bring it down to about one, which basically means when it's 
dropped at least 1% below 91%, which is what I set, uh, the fiber will kick in. And this is the humidity difference as well. This will tell it when to turn off and if it's reached at least, let's say two degrees, um, it will shut off the humidity that's being created. As you can see, we just programmed it and the fogger is already turned on and activated because there is a insufficient amount of humidity within the chamber at this moment. As you can see, the meter is actually reading uh, the humidity and you can see that's actually increasing because the fogger is on. Remember to place plug into work one. For the last step, we're going to plug our light fixture, LED light, into the smart plug and plug this into our outlet, like so. Make sure you read the instructions and follow the instructions for whatever uh, the smart plug states. And you're going to want to download the app that's listed in the app store on your smartphone. Follow the instructions on the app to connect to the smart plug. When we do this, we are going to set up a 12 hour light cycle uh, to induce pinning, just like how the sun would induce pinning on a mushroom in the wild. Uh, with adequate sunlight. Uh, not much sunlight is truly needed, but uh, I like to keep it 12 hours so it keeps some sort of regular uh, natural cycle that a normal mushroom would experience. So this is your finished mushroom grow chamber. Now you're ready to place your mycelium blocks inside or get off greenfoodsolutions.com. Have fun growing. So thank you for joining the Green Food Solutions Grow Food at Home Easily presentation. We hope you learned a lot about growing mushrooms at home and find value in this particular grow chamber kit that's really easy to assemble as Mateo helped uh, you guys see that and walk you through the steps step by step. All of the parts are available at the greenfoodsolutions.com forward slash mushrooms. Uh, just go to our website and if you like this video, please click the like button below and hit subscribe. Again, if you do like this video and you thought it was valuable, we appreciate it if you click that like button and hit subscribe. Thank you very much. See you again.